All right, guys, so welcome back. Uh, I got busy doing a lot of non-car related stuff this weekend, but I wanted to give you guys a little update. Uh, I'd posted some pictures on the Facebook group and on Instagram, and some of you had some questions, so I'm gonna answer those. Finally got a new set of back wheels, wider wheels, and some drag radials for Chaos Theory, and some of you guys were asking me what size the wheels were, what size the tires were, things like that, how they fit. So I'm just gonna kinda go over that real quick. Uh, I also wanted to show you, I built this nice new wheel rack here. So uh, one of the issues I've got, as you guys know, my garage is very small, very cluttered. Um, we've got extra wheels for uh, CC here, Chaos Theory, and we've also got extra wheels uh, for the China Vet outside there. So uh, one of the problems I had, since I'm so cluttered in here anyway, is you know we just had the wheels laying around. So I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. Uh, this cost me about 25 bucks to make. Uh, basically, I just bought one eight foot two by four, and I already had this this one by eight uh, laying around in the garage here. So um, I bought the one two by four, and I bought four of these brackets here. And basically, all I did was I, I cut my one by in half, and I screwed it to the studs on the wall, and I just set my wheels up here to kind of figure out what I wanted my spacing to be. And these little brackets here, we just screw them to the one by and then screw them to the two by fours. The, I had, uh, turns out this was exactly 48 inches across. It's where my hot water heater is back there. And um, it was the perfect spot for this. Uh, 48 inches across gives me room to put a couple of 11 inch wide tires and um, you know, these are my, my street tires on the extra set of wheels for Chaos Theory, but the uh, the wheels that I've got on there now should fit up there with a little room to spare too. So uh, these are our wheels that we race with, with the China Vet. It's got our Mickey Thompson uh, ET Street SS tires. And then, like I just said, uh, our, we've got our street tires on our 15 by seven wheels for chaos theory up here because of the new wheels that we got. When I bought CC, she already had a set of 15 by seven all the way around the 15 by seven. They're like fake drag stars, you know, like the weld drag drag stars, I think they're called. Uh, they're just knockoffs of those. They're made by Pacer. So I didn't want to have to buy new front and rear wheels. I'm just running like a 20570 up front. So, you know, it's only about six inches wide anyway. It's not a skinny, but it's not far from it. Uh, so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to buy a second set of wider wheels for the back. So in case you guys didn't know, most of you do, I'm sure, uh, Jegs makes the same type of knockoffs, but they're about a 100 and, I think they're $120 a piece, but they're actually made by Vision. The Jegs wheels are. Well, if you go on eBay, uh, you can buy the Vision wheels, which are the exact same thing as the Jegs wheels. They make them in all the same styles Jegs do, but they're about $15 cheaper a piece. So I got a set of 15 by 10s. The back spacing is 5.5 inches, and it worked out great. I mean, I held up a plumb bob, and I'll put up the picture here in a second but when i hold up my plumb bob string here you can see that the wheel is actually just barely inside um inside my fender lip there or my my rear quarter panel lip there so it doesn't poke out at all it actually looks pretty nice on there And the drag radials that we put on there, you guys might remember before we had a set of the Mickey Thompson Pro Bracket radials. We had a set of 26 by 8.5s, and we had them mounted on the 7-inch wheel. Well, now, as I just showed you up in my wheel rack, we've got a set of uh, 255, 60, just regular street tires mounted on, on two of those wheels. And on these, I stayed with the same... The same height i stayed with a 26 inch tall tire but it's 10 inches wide now so quite a bit more meat back here as you can see i figured as as good as those uh 
as good as those pro bracket radials were, were hooking on an 8.5 inch, uh, I figured the 10 inch would do me good. So that's what I put on here, and I was, I was thinking I was going to have to do some cutting. Not out here. I mean, we're at stock ride height, so I got quite a bit of gap here. And, you know, the way I got the suspension set up, uh, the car shouldn't squat in the back anymore. It should actually separate a little bit. So the only thing I was worried about is in the back. The only places I was really worried about in the back is we've got this bump stop right here. I'm pointing at it. Uh, that bump stop... It, it doesn't cause any problems. It looks like we're clearing it just fine, but I'm probably going to go ahead and cut it off. Well, you can unbolt the bump stop, but then the bracket that it bolts to, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off just to give me some more clearance. Um, I know in the future, when we step up to a 28.10.5, uh, we may have some issue there, but for now, I mean, I can't reach my hand in from this angle and hold the camera too. Uh, but I can get my whole hand. I'm trying to get the camera at an angle where you can see the cap. I mean, there's a good, I don't know. <sighs> there's, there's plenty of gap there, guys. There's almost an inch, maybe more, um, between that bump stop bracket. I'm just cutting it off, uh, you know, just in case when this thing separates or something, uh, so the tire doesn't hit it, uh, just in case. And also because I know I'm going to be running a little bit wider, uh, wider tire in the future. So, um, that was one issue or one place that I was worried about and it ended up being unfounded worry because uh, You know it fit in here just fine and the other place I was worried about was actually right up here in front and You know, I'm still a little worried about it. I don't know if you guys can see but I'm gonna try to get you in here But right here This body panel here um, It's pretty close it's pretty close here to the tire. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my grinder and I'm gonna cut this off um, and just kind of beat it over, fold it over. It's just a it's just a seam, guys, where, where the two body panels come together under here. But we're gonna go ahead and cut that off and fold it over. Uh, I don't think it's gonna make contact with this tire in particular, but uh, once again, in the future, we're gonna be stepping up to a 28.10.5. And at that point, I'm pretty sure it would hit it. So why not go ahead and just take care of it now while nothing's in the way? So the main reason I'm making this short little video is because, you know, in addition to you guys asking me, I see this question asked all the time on the third gen pages on Facebook and on thirdgen.org, the forum. People are always asking, you know, what backspacing should they run with a 15 by 10 on a third gen Camaro? Well, th this is it. You know, some people will tell you to run a 6.5 backspace. And, you know, if you do that, it pushes it in. You have to do a whole lot of cutting in there to get it to fit. Once again, guys, you know, if I hold the camera right down the body line, you can see it's not poking out at all. That's a 15 by 10 on a 10 inch wheel. Um, or I mean, um, with a 5.5 back spacing we'll go to the front of the car and you can look right down the body line here so i'm i'm holding it right down here even with the front fender and you can see like there's no poke it's not going to stick out you're not going to look like joe dirt um i mean it actually looks pretty good i like the little white you know i like my tire to be uh pretty close to even with the upper lip here uh, I, and that's one thing I've always hated about all the third gens I owned is even with the stock wheels, they're sunk in, kind of like these front wheels are, like they're they're sunk way in. And I just, I don't know, guys, it just looks kind of nerdy. Um, I like my tire to be kind of even. Now, when we go to a twenty eight ten five, um, I'm I'm guessing the section width on these, the section width on these. Uh, 26 tens is 11.4 inches and in case you guys don't know that's like where it bulbs out that's the widest point of the tire okay that's your section width and on these it's like 11.4 inches and i think on the mickey thompson's or i'm i'm sorry i think on the uh on the uh Eden, well what is this the pro brackets the 28 10 fives i think the section width is like 11.9 so there's gonna be a little more bulge coming out. So, 
you know you some of that bulge may come out past this you know past this fender line here but uh i don't know guys i think it'll look fine so some of you guys might ask they've been following this build you know you might ask me why i didn't just go ahead and get a 28 10 5 it's entirely about the gear ratio guys and taking it easy on this stock rear end so we've got you know for for you guys who haven't been following this build uh, i did a video a while back where we put a mini spool in this rear end so this is a 1990 model so it came with the 28 spline axles the only thing we have done to this rear end is put the mini spool in it uh that was back at the beginning of the chaos theory build when we put that in there uh, and this has a, a 323 gear ratio now the 323 gear ratio with a 26 inch tall tire uh, at 7,000 RPMs should run 167 miles an hour. And I wanted to kind of keep that for later, for future plans. I want to keep that overall gear ratio uh, to make this car capable of hitting, you know, 167 ish to 170 in the quarter mile. So. It's probably never going to do it before we change the rear ends. I, as a matter of fact, I can guarantee you it won't because we'd blow this rear end apart. Um, but if I would have put the 28-inch tire, it would have effectively, you know, raised the ratio in the rear end and slowed the car down. Um, so until I get my 9-inch in here, I, I didn't want to go to a taller tire. So that's why I decided to stick with a 26-inch tire, um, and I got the 26 by 10 now later on when we get the uh the nine inch put in here that nine inch is going to have a 350 gear ratio well the 350 gear ratio with a 28 inch tall tire works out to the exact same uh, well not exact but almost the same uh overall ratio as a 323 with a 26 inch tire so that's my logic guys uh that's why i stuck with a 26 inch tall tire for now uh, when the other rear end goes in, you know, it'll be geared a little lower. And at that point, we'll step up to the, the 28105. Now, Mr. Dion Holmes actually asked me on the group page the other day, or no, he might have asked me. I think it, I, I replied to one of his comments on Facebook, and he had asked me when I was going to go back up to English Mountain. Uh, so here's the deal, man. If the weather's good, and if I can do what I want to do this week after work on this car, I would really like to take it back to English Mountain uh, this coming weekend. So I can't guarantee that, but that's my plan for the time being. Um, the only thing really I need to do, the I mean, the car is the car's capable of running the way it sits. The only thing I really need to do is fill it back up with water. I had drained the water because of the cold weather, you know, didn't want to crack something, but I need to do that. And also I got this nice uh, Durali cooler i think i may have showed you guys in another video but i got this Durali transmission cooler so i'm going to try to get this installed uh, i'm wanting to put it in the back of the car i'm going to try to get that installed this week hopefully after work one day and while i got the car up on jack stands i'll go ahead and cut off the uh the areas that i showed you guys the bump stops for the axle and uh you know in that body seam in front of the tires there uh, I'll go ahead and get all that cut off while I got the car on jack stands this time doing the cooler. And I also, while I got it up there, I'm wanting to give it a little more anti-squat. So uh, we're probably going to drop the lower control arms in those adjustable brackets that we put on. So if I can get all that done this week, then yeah, hopefully we'll be at English Mountain next weekend. Um, I would like to run the car a few more times on nitrous. Uh, you know, we've... we've <laughs> We've had some financial issues over here that have kind of kept me from getting really getting going on the turbo build. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are, are pushing me. Hey, when are you putting the twin turbos on? When are you putting it on? And you, know, you guys know I already have most of the stuff, just about everything. I think the only thing I don't have over here to do the twin turbos is the oil feed lines. Like that's it. Like I've got everything else, all the piping we need. Uh, you know the all the stuff for the drain lines we've got the turbos the wastegate i mean we've got everything here except for the feed lines uh but guys it's like this i had originally planned on doing the twin turbo build over the winter uh some things have come up that have kept me from doing that and uh 
I, I want to get it done, but at the same time, I really want to push this car a little harder on the nitrous before I put the turbos on anyway. So, you know, maybe we can do that the next couple weekends and uh and then i can talk to my cousin and we can go ahead and start mocking all this twin turbo stuff up uh, i actually the original plan was uh, i was just going to build off these headers i already have but what i ended up doing i wanted to start fresh for the twin turbo build so i just i went ahead and i bought a whole nother set of the uh of the up and forward headers here you know they're, they're identical to these i even ordered them from the same seller on ebay uh but I think what we're going to do is we're not even going to V-band the turbos at all. Uh, we're actually going to cut them back a little further here um, into the merge here and just come straight off that. That way I don't have to fool with V-bands or, you know, worrying about the turbos moving or the V-bands leaking or anything like that. That was something that I've just decided in the last couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, we got those. We got, well, you can see all my popping sitting on the hood of the car. I mean, we got we got popping for waste gates. We got you know three inch pop for the hot side, and you know for the exhaust to come out in the same spot that it does now. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I just wanted to give you that little update, uh, mainly to show you the new wheels and tires we got for the back. Hopefully these these are going to help us hook even better. Uh, the eight, you know, the twenty six by eight pro brackets. Uh, they were dead hooking and doing great at Knoxville, you know, where there's decent prep. Uh, but at English Mountain, you know, you, you guys can go back and watch those videos. I mean, I was making some pretty good hits up at English Mountain, uh, but but it was pretty much spinning the whole pass. I mean, it was fighting for traction. So I'm hoping that extra inch and a half of rubber there is going to help me out at English Mountain. And, um, you know, hopefully by the time we outgrow these power wise where we need the 28 10 fives uh hopefully by that time we'll have the money to go ahead and do a nine inch in the car and you know we can go up uh, or go down however you want to look at it go up numerically on the gear ratio that's pretty much it guys just a little update video and talking about the new wheels and tires and uh yeah so get out in the garage get something done thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.